Now, in fact, I've made a small error here uh, because if I have a look here, uh, I created a camera early on, but uh, we can't we can't see it here. It doesn't seem to be in the scene view, and the reason is because I was in this sub network when I used the tool. Uh, it's created the camera down here, so I'm going to select that, click somewhere out of the node, cut back up to the scene view and paste, and that will move our camera up to the scene view. So that's pretty much everything done in terms of our modeling. Now we need to uh, have a go at lighting and rendering. Well, the first thing I'm going to do as we get on to lighting and rendering is to change the rendering node. Now the interactive renderer has created this node for us called Mantra IPR. I'm going to change the name of this to Mantra PBR. And on the properties tab here on the renderer, I'm going to change this to physically based rendering. And that's because in any scene where you've got a lot of glass uh, or reflective material, then uh, physically based rendering is much, much more efficient. Well, you may ask why we didn't use micropolygon physically based rendering. Uh, the answer to that is that where you don't have any motion in the scene, where you're not using motion blur, there's not much advantage to using micropolygon based physic physically based rendering. So that's our renderer set up. Uh, the next thing we're going to need to do is set up some materials. So let's start by working with the glass here. And I'm going to go into the material palette and I'm going to select a glass material and I'm going to add it to the palette. And there are two ways then that we can add it to this object. Uh, the one I'm going to use is to drag and drop it, right mouse button, click on this, drag it into the view and drop it over the object that you want it to apply to. So let's have a look back in our object network to check whether that's happened and yes indeed it has. Now a few words about rendering glass. Because glass is transparent usually. It's quite hard to render it well unless it's reflecting things in your scene. The thing that defines the shape and look and gla of glass are the objects and lights which are reflected in it. So the thing to make a good scene with glass is to have the right objects and lights to be reflected. So that's what we're going to set up now. And it can be quite tricky to set up uh, reflection objects because they need to be in exactly the right place to create the effect that you want. So in order to try to make that easier, it's often useful to minimize the other distractions in the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the display of these other objects, just leave us with this outside of the glass. And the other thing I'm going to do is to go into our glass material here. You notice I clicked the little, let's go back, I can click this little arrow here to get to the material and by default refraction is enabled. Uh, we'll talk about the index of refraction in more detail later on but I'm going to leave this at the default for the moment but I'm going to disable refractions and I'm going to keep reflections as they are and because this is just going to reflect it's going to be easier to see where we should put our reflection objects. Well, there are two things that you can use to reflect in glass. One of them is area lights and the other is uh, stand-in cards or rectangles, which we'll demonstrate in a moment. So the first thing we're going to do is go for an area light. So I'm going to look through our camera view uh, and then I'm going to pan round a bit and maybe zoom out so I can see the camera and I want to probably be at about 90 degrees to the camera. And then I'm going to control click the area light tool. And that's going to place an area light in my scene. Let's uh, zoom around so that we can have a look at it. And it's quite a long way away. Let's, uh, let's bring it a bit further in. It's got these manipulators which allow me to bring it in. And the other thing I'm going to do is change its size and the size controls are down here on the area light options so let's first of all increase its width just a bit to two and increase its height quite a bit say to 
9 or 10. And let's just uh, render this and see what it looks like. And what we should see is that this light is reflected in the glass. That seems not to work. Let me just click render, see whether it's going to work. There we go. And we can see that that light is indeed being reflected in the glass. So now let's add uh, an object uh, which the glass can reflect. So let me go into my scene view and I'm going to lay down a grid. Let's put it at the origin for the moment. And I'm going to dive inside the grid and let's make it 2 by 10, rather like the other light. And let's put it onto the YZ plane. And I want it, I want to position it Let's move up to the scene level to position it. And I want to position it probably around, let's look at the top, more or less in the same place on the other side of the glass that the light is. So let me rotate that round so that it's facing the glass. Now, in order for this to be reflected, uh, the best thing is to give it a constant material. So let's go into the material palette find a constant material, add that to our palette, and apply that to this reflector. So let's have a look at the render view, and render again. And we're just getting a little tiny bit of reflection there. So one of the things that you may have to do is increase the color of your reflector. So let's make this, say, 8. And we can see this is now being reflected. You'll notice, however, uh, that the light is still brighter than this reflected object. And the reason for that is that by default, uh, reflected objects are about 10 times less bright than reflected lights. So a reflected object would need to have a color of 10 by 10 by 10 to approach the re reflectivity of one of these area lights. So let's now, uh, that we've done that, have a look at how that looks with a few more things turned on. So I'm going to turn on, let me just go back, uh, let's make sure this is not going to keep rendering, move back to my scene view, and let's enable the liquid at the top and the sides for the moment. And we're going to need some materials for these two, but they're going to be slightly different from the materials that we've got for the glass. Well, let's start by looking at the glass material again. And I'm going to enable refractions so that this will now be a bit more like glass. Uh, and then I'm going to Control C, Control V with the glass selected, and that's going to give us a copy of it. And I'm going to call this, say, uh, liquid glass. And what this is going to represent is the inside of the liquid here where it's touching the glass. So let's zoom into our object again. Let's turn on the display of normals. And in fact, let me dive into this object, which is the sides, and have a look and see where our normals are pointing. So our normals are pointing inwards, so they're pointing in towards the liquid. And that's important because when we want to create our material here, liquid glass, we need to set the inside index of refraction and the outside ind index of refraction correctly in order for this to look good. So the outside is what's pointed to by the normals. So in this case, the outside is going to have the same index of refraction as the glass, whereas the inside is going to have the index of refraction of water, which I'm going to put at uh, 0.36. Uh, you can use a number of different values here. It's basically an artistic choice as to what index of refraction you use. So I'm going to apply this uh, to that sides of the liquid and that's probably a bit hard to do in this view so I'm just going to go 
up to the object object level and here I'm going to use this selector to select liquid glass. Let's go back into our materials and control C control V again to create another copy and this time I'm going to call this liquid top and the liquid top is going to be this top area here and so let's just again have a look at that in isolation and we can see just turn off all other objects we can see that the normals are pointing downwards so in other words uh, the normals are pointing in towards the liquid again so let's give this this material that we just created liquid top click this arrow to go to it so in this case the outside is going to be the liquid and the inside is going to be air which has an index of a fraction of one so that's set up our main uh, materials now uh, let's just do a render and see what it looks like So that's looking pretty good actually. We might feel that we need a few more things uh, for this to reflect. We might want another area light and we might also want a sort of default background, something interesting for the glass to reflect, which is not set up individually piece by piece. Obviously we could add more and more reflectors and more and more area lights to produce a really complicated pattern, but it would be very time consuming. And there is fortunately something else we can do uh, and that is to put an environment light into the scene so let's control click the environment light tool and the environment light has several roles uh, we can use it to light our scene uh, we can use it to create an ambient ambient occlusion effect uh, but what we're going to use it for here is the ray tracing background so this means that when the renderer is tracing a ray out, say from our glass, and it doesn't hit anything, it just disappears off to infinity. Instead of just returning black, reflecting nothing, what it will reflect is a texture map that we attach to this environment light. So let's go up here and select an environment map. So let me just see this. Uh, we've got one here, we've got background. So let's just add, add that. And this is just a pattern of squiggly white lines. It's, it's pretty subtle. And again, let's just see what the difference that's made. So let's re-render. And that's This seems to be a little bit dark here, so let's have a look and see what's going on here. Uh, and I suspect what's happening is, let's just have a look at our glass material here. And first of all, let's change our reflect object so that it doesn't have a separate set of parameters. In other words, that we cheat objects and lights in exactly the same way. Uh, and then let's have a look down at our... Now we can see we've got a specular angle here. That means that this is tending to blur our highlights. We probably want to take this down to a very low number if we want to have shiny glass. And indeed, we want to do this for all of these materials. So let's select all of them. We can see that it says three nodes selected up here. And we can edit all of the parameters at once. So let's do that. Let's go into Reflect and let's take this down to a value of one and let's render again and see what we get we're now getting much much sharper reflections
So you may have noticed this render has a slightly odd milky appearance here. Uh, and the reason for that is because I've actually made a mistake in my glass shader, which is that I've set the refraction indices the wrong way around. Uh, sorry, not in the glass shader, the liquid glass interface, where I have set the outside to 1.52 and the inside to 1.36. And those should, of course, be the other way around, because if you remember, the normals were pointing towards the liquid and the normals point towards the outside. So the liquid, which has an index of refraction of 1.3, uh, is pointing, is, is on the outside, if you like, of, of our surface. Uh, by the way, I've just taken these values for the index of refraction from the internet. This is a typical value for water. This is a fairly typical value for thick glass. Now, I'm not going to go through step by step the positioning of all of the area lights and reflectors that I might want to use in the scene. I'm going to skip straight ahead to somewhere nearer the final version. But I want to just demonstrate how you can go about interactively placing these lights or reflections. So let's go back and switch off all the unnecessary objects again and just have our glass. And once again, I'm going to turn off refractions. So we're just going to have the glass reflecting what's out there. And then we can split this pane into two. And we do that using this little menu at the side here. And we can split left to right, like so. And we get two render views, uh, one on the left, one on the right. But I'm going to turn this back to a scene view because what I want to do is to manipulate my light while also interactive, interactively rendering. So with this set to camera, make sure it's not set to scene view, make sure it's set to camera, click render, and it starts rendering. And then it will interactively update as I move my light around. So that allows you to change the position of your light and to see how it looks. And obviously the reason I've turned off the other objects is also to speed up the render. Now you can see another thing here is that this light has really pretty sharp edges. So one of the things you might want to do is in your area light options, you can enable an option called edge fall off. And if I enable this, quite hard to tell, but if we increase this, say, to 0.6, which is really exaggerating it, you can see here at the edge here, this is now tailing off. And what edge fall off does is smooth the edges of our area light so they fade gradually to black rather than suddenly fading to black. You probably don't need it really more above than about 0.2. So I'm going to leave it there without positioning all of our lights, and I'm going to load up a version of the scene which has everything pretty much in a near final state. So this is the scene with the final area lights set up, and in fact I've ended up with three different area lights, one just below the camera, one behind the glass here, and a third one over to the side here. And we can see the render that that is currently producing. Uh, the other thing that I've just tweaked is I've turned down the reflectivity, the specular intensity of our lights, uh, of our materials rather. And this is what it looks like. I can close off this, this separate window here. I don't really need it anymore. Just by clicking the close on this last tab. And when I do that, we will revert back to having a single view here. So what I need to do next is sort out our bubbles and our ice cubes. So let me have a look at our bubbles and ice cubes. So they're inside this subnetwork. I'm going to create a material for these. So let me do that in our shop network. And again, let me just Control-C, Control-V on our existing glass material. 
and let's call this ice and I'm going to give this some refraction indices uh, and if you remember our ice has the normals pointing outwards so that's going to be towards the liquid and let's try having an inside index of refraction of 0.4 let's say and I'm just guessing here what ice might be and the other thing I'm going to need are some is a material for my bubbles so again let's control C control V with that material selected and select bubbles and in this case the inside of my bubble is going to be air and the outside is going to be the liquid so let's just set up those objects to have those materials so let's have my ice and let's choose ice for those and bubbles let's choose bubbles good so let's see what this looks like with a render and let's render again and in fact I think I probably haven't switched on the display of these objects let's do that and it's now rendering these and we can see that we're not getting very bright reflections of these objects all that we're seeing is just a very slight outline of them here and this may be what you want but it may be uh, not what you want one of the things uh, that you should do before uh, trying other things is rotating these cubes of ice a little bit just to see whether you can uh, make them catch the light a little bit more effectively than they do perhaps in the positions we put them originally and you can do that using the technique I showed earlier of splitting this pane so that you have an interactive render view updating the whole time and then you're able to manipulate the ice cubes and see the effect straight away and with the interactive render as you know you can shift and drag around a particular area like so and it will just render that area so if you find that as you're manipulating the ice cubes rotating them and so on the interactive render is not updating fast enough you can always zoom in on an area like this and to get rid of uh, a subselected area like that you shift click outside now in fact the reason uh, that we have these very faint reflections around here is because the ice cubes are representing a transition from a liquid with a index of refraction of 1.3 into a cube with an index of refraction of 1.4 it's not much of a difference and that means you're not going to get much reflection and the reason you're not going to get much reflection is because by default all of these materials that we're using let's have a look at the ice here all of these materials are using Fresnel blending uh, Fresnel is a mathematical prediction of how much light will be reflected depending on the angle with which the light is hitting the surface relative to the camera uh, this is physically realistic this is how ice would actually look in a cup of water but it's not necessarily what you want in order to produce the best uh, most attractive image so you've got a couple of options here we can either turn off Fresnel blending and we can see what that now looks like uh, and we can see that our ice is now more or less sort of glowing and illuminated in the center of our glass and the reason for that is that it's reflecting that background that we set very effectively because that reflection is no longer being attenuated by the Fresnel function uh, and that, that actually looks pretty attractive uh, if you prefer you can get a slightly different effect by cheating and we can cheat here 
on the indices of refraction. So let's take this down to 1, for example, and have an outside indice, inside index of refraction of 1.36. And we can see that we're now getting quite interesting reflections of our lights on the ice cubes here. So the final thing I need to do is to set up a high quality render output for this picture. So let's start by Control C, Control V, where we've got our existing mantra node selected. And I'm going to call this mantra PBR HQ for high quality. And the first thing I'm going to do is change some of the sampling parameters. Now in Houdini 11, uh, both the PBR engine and the normal engine use uh, ray variance and aliens, ray variance and aliasing. So I can put this up to, say, a maximum number of samples of 64 and reduce the acceptable noise level down to 0 0.01 and that will improve the quality of the render. And instead of rendering it to the default viewer, I'm going to render it to a file. So I can choose the file. If I click on HIP here, this gives me the directory in which my HIP file is currently stored. And I've got a pick subdirectory, which I've already created, and I'm going to call it final.png. So let's put that in there. And of course, it's going to be an 8-bit integer output. So that's pretty much set up. Uh, I'm not going to record the whole of this rendering. In fact, uh, let, me, let me change one more thing here. I'm going to change the size of the... I'm going to override the camera resolution, and I'm going to give it... 1280 by 720 resolution. So I'm not going to render this while we wait and record it, but I am going to render it separately and I'll end this video with a picture of the final render. Uh, I hope it's been useful.